I once sold a gum wrapper on eBay for $12. In 2021, I sold a potato chip on eBay for $42. This video is not full of the crazy stories of people selling Super Bowl water and Tom Brady retirement sand, which is still selling on eBay, but only for $9. This is me. These are actual items that I sell and have sold on eBay, and they're probably some weird items that you could be selling on eBay also. So why aren't you? Am I time sharing my reselling journey here on YouTube? YouTube, if I had a dollar for every time someone said, wow, I had no idea you could sell that, or wow, I didn't know people would buy something like that, or I would never have thought about listing something like that. So if the only reason that you're not selling and listing in some of these far off categories is that no one ever told you it was possible, allow me to introduce you to some items that you didn't realize you could sell on eBay. All right. <laughs> We are getting straight into today's video because man do I have another really cool list for you guys. These are items that you never thought about selling on eBay. Some of them are really off the wall but some of them are basic things that I have made thousands of dollars selling on eBay that people sell on eBay every single day. You just never really put two and two together that there was a buyer out there for this item. Our number one thing is architectural salvage. It sounds really fancy when I say it like that. It sounds very American pickers and you're thinking pulling gargoyles off the exterior of a building or something but architectural salvage can really be present in a lot of basic ranch style homes built in the 50s, 60s, 70s all across America. You're watching people remodel homes and I guarantee you profits are going straight into the dumpster. Take for instance those crazy colored bathrooms and the bathroom tiles that go along with them. All of the comps I'm showing you today are sold comps. Unless I specify that, hey, these are listed, everything I'm showing you today has actually sold on eBay. Check out these wonderful green bathroom tiles. So they had the bathtub soap dish plus 30 tiles, and guys, they sold it for over $265. This one is just the toilet paper holder, and it's in black, $145 plus shipping. Here's that green color again, just the toilet paper holder at 145 bucks all over eBay you will see these reclaimed architectural salvage used whatever you want to call it reclaimed is a really good keyword to use here but you will see these tiles check out the pink ones here 20 of them for $75 repeated solds 15 of this white color for $75 we remodeled our hall bathroom and when I told my husband that I knew I could sell these tiles he painstakingly pulled each one off and I probably probably ended up netting somewhere around $1,200, maybe $1,500 off of the tiles that we pulled off the wall. And I have not even sold yet the toilet paper holder, the soap dish, and the towel racks. And I know those are going to go for good money. That was just on the tiles that we pulled out of the tiniest little hall bathroom. If you are remodeling a bathroom, if you have a friend or a neighbor that's remodeling one and they're getting rid of these colorful tiles or the white ones with the speckles, please list those things on eBay. They're not as hard to ship as what you might think, but there is definitely a process to it. Anytime you're mailing something like this, you definitely want to float a box inside of a box. Um, be sure that they're not going to rattle or clank around and damage one another. While we're remodeling these mid-century homes, we pull out a lot of really cool light fixtures. And I don't just mean cool like this. When I say reclaimed or architectural salvage light fixtures, a lot of people are thinking something gorgeous like this. But what if I told you it could be a light fixture as cool as this one? They took a best offer from $42. And this one, I know I'm not the only person that grew up looking at this same light fixture. Guys, it sold for $99.95 plus shipping. And what home in America in the 70s and 80s did not have this light? $34. Architectural salvage still does not stop there. We all know that doorknobs can be good money, but it doesn't just have to be an antique wood or antique crystal doorknob. Several vintage brass doorknobs can be really great money. Basically anytime you're remodeling or you know someone who is, check comps. Some of the old light fixtures that people around here would just throw in the dumpster, I've sold for really good money. My husband is an electrician and so often when people hire him to hang new lights, they ask, will you please dispose of the old one? Absolutely, he's happy to. This piece 
kind of goes along with architectural salvage but is a good segue into our next category as well and that's cabinet drawer pulls because we can pull these from cabinets but we can also pull them from furniture when you're pulling them from a cabinet I definitely feel like they are architectural salvage but when it is pulled from a piece of furniture it's parting it out these 1970s brass drawer pulls are probably worth more than what you would have thought and you, if you can find any old porcelain knobs they go for a lot of money so when you find a really cool old dresser that's maybe past its prime and can't be rehabbed but the knobs are really cool consider parting those out on eBay and while we're talking about parting things out let's say you find a really killer electronic but you're not sure how to test it or it doesn't work or maybe it's just too big bulky to live in your inventory or it's too heavy to ship for whatever reason you don't want to sell the entire electronic consider parting that out there are over 1.2 million listings on eBay right now with the keyword replacement part and then in the last 90 days 38,000 items that were tagged replacement part sold on the platform check out this dirt devil vacuum hose selling for over $30 just for the hose my friend Anthony C he's Anthony makes change over on Instagram he got a new refrigerator and he took all the shelves out of his old one and sold them piece by piece on eBay here's a replacement coffee filter a KitchenAid food processor bowl that sold for over $40 just for the bowl do you have any idea how much easier to ship this thing is than the entire food processor it's a well-known fact that bread baker paddles and pans are really good sellers for replacements also and here's a Barbie Dreamhouse elevator just the elevator you guys sold for $20 you can practically pop that in a small box or a poly mailer versus milling an entire Barbie dream house this one's a replacement part you might not have considered it's Chanel sunglass stems over $20 for these so even if the lenses are busted out if it's a good brand consider parting out something as crazy as a pair of broken sunglasses one thing I really love to pick up but I kind of hate to ship is board games when they're super large it's hard to get a buyer to want to pay the shipping when it can sometimes be more than what the board game costs fret not you can part those out too. look at some of these board game replacement parts I cannot believe that the Monopoly Batman pieces go for this much money when that's not even that old of a board game it's possible um, maybe I haven't brought up something that you see every single day yet but I bet with this one whether you want to source it or not you see it every day and that's found items in nature did you know that four leaf clovers have a 50% sell through rate that's kind of insane you guys there are 16 listed and eight sold of four leaf clovers my oldest son finds four leaf clovers every time he goes looking for them and he's a reseller so I think he just found a new way to source I'm not saying it's gonna make you rich but they do sell it's kind of crazy so it makes you wonder what else in my yard sells on eBay do you have a lot of oak trees because acorns sell on eBay pine cones sell on eBay with acorns and pine cones you really want to use the keyword craft I can think of one location in my town that has a lot of evergreen trees lots of pine cones present and I think it's more of a nuisance to them so I may reach out to that business and ask could I gather up a bag of pine cones if you guys want to see me source and try to sell a bag of pine cones comment that below and let me know this next one really blew my mind though we live on six acres of woods so I take for granted the fact that we're surrounded by trees and I realize not everyone is but did you know that you can sell sticks and twigs on eBay I mean sticks and twigs and if they're Apple they're definitely selling on eBay because apparently people use those for their guinea pigs gerbils hamsters things like that but trees like birch anything that is exotic and beautiful you can definitely sell those for craft I'm not entirely sure of the legalities of selling driftwood or seashells but I have seen a lot of people sell those also if it's something that you want to source ensure that where you're sourcing it from it's okay for you to take it I know handmade is a keyword that we use a lot when we thrift things like quilts or maybe folk art or something like that but have you ever considered selling your own handmade crafts and creations on eBay I know we're more apt to think of Etsy for that type of thing my friend Whitney is super talented when it comes to crochet and she made these um, kind of a pullover shrug and I was able to sell that for her for $60 on eBay around here you would be hard-pressed to get that type of money for it because crochet is more uh, common of a hobby but there are plenty of areas where whatever your hobby or craft is 
not everyone is doing that and it's harder to find those handmade goods. I was able to find all kinds of comps for items from crochet to 3D printing. There were some basic things like this really cool crochet hat and then there were more advanced pieces like this crochet kimono shrug robe piece. It was really cool. And in the world of 3D printing, again, we had some really basic entry level pieces that were uh, monochromatic. And then there were pieces like this, custom, hand painted, and absolutely amazing. Cooler than anything that you're gonna find um, available at the stores, selling for hundreds of dollars. These are 3D printed by the same people that are selling them. What about listing items that you didn't necessarily source, you just happened upon? Check out this listing for empty DVD cases. They're selling for $2.75 plus shipping each. I've seen people sell DVDs for less than that. We're going to call this category trash for lack of a better way to explain it because we're talking empty wrappers, empty containers, and yes, even empty boxes. I picked this empty box up from an estate sale and yes, it's listed on my eBay right now. My son and I have sold lots of empty boxes. He sold his empty PS5 box for $80 on eBay. When Christmas rolls around and you know people that are getting new Apple products and new video game systems, you have got to get those boxes if they are just going to throw them out. Let the people in your life know right now that you're looking for those. Any college students who just went back to school who maybe got new computers, um, new air pods, new phones, guys, those boxes sell. Many of you are aware of this, but many of you are not. My friend just recently got a new Garmin that is a, a GPS watch. She got the Phoenix 6X and I can't wait to show her that a box for the watch that she just bought just sold just the empty box for $30 plus shipping. A huge category for empty boxes is empty luxury boxes. Hermes, Louis Vuitton, Christian Dior. If you can find any of these empty boxes, their tissue papers, their ribbons, any of the packing material for luxury goods can sell for a lot of money. Some people like to frame and display high-end luxury shopping bags. Um, picture Gucci in a frame in someone's closet. It's a fun way to decorate for people that appreciate the luxury brand. And if you're gifting a gently used luxury product, it's always nice to be able to package it in the bag. Sometimes resellers buy these empty boxes to increase the value of the item that they're selling. Even empty Lego boxes can bring really good money. This Lego Star Wars box at auction brought $275. And if you ever happen upon the Lego Titanic box, it will bring you over $150. Even these little Lego clamshell cases that hold three minifigs can sell for $2 a piece plus shipping. It truly is one man's trash that can be another man's treasure. Hey, can we pause the video here for just a second? Because I don't know if you saw in my last video, I was eyeballing this Louis Vuitton wallet that one of you guys is going to win. Well, if you're subscribed to the channel. This amazing Louis Vuitton wallet, I'm going to give away to a subscriber of the channel, but I'm not gonna do it until we hit 20,000 subscribers, but I don't know if you've noticed, that's gonna happen really fast. So be sure that you're subscribed and you're gonna be entered to win this authentic vintage Louis Vuitton wallet. I, not everybody gives away Louis Vuitton, but nothing but the best for you guys, but you gotta be subscribed. I told you guys about the empty gum wrapper that I sold. Let me tell you the story about that. I had sourced a little boy's coat from the 1960s and we always go through the coat pockets, you know, you gotta get your hands on someone else's snotty rags to truly be a reseller. When I was cleaning out the little boy's coat pockets, I pulled out the wrapper from a stick of gum from Wrigley Spearmint 1960s and then also the um, the package, the, the entire five stick package for the Wrigley. And my husband was gonna throw it away and I said, absolutely not. I guarantee you someone is looking for that. Someone is collecting that. Someone will buy that. And guys, I listed it at $12.95 with free shipping and it sold. If you can find vintage candy wrappers, vintage um, playing card wrappers, but by far the most interesting piece of trash that I saw on eBay in the last 90 days sold is this piece of cardboard. This one truly blows my mind, guys. This was at auction, over $600 for the cardboard insert for a Star Wars 
action figure. It's not the exterior box. I looked through the entire listing. It is just this one piece of cardboard. Um, tell me in the comments if you would have seen this and done anything but recycle it, use it for packing material. That's more than my mortgage every month. That is insane. One of my favorite things to list and sell are old photographs. I'm not saying I'm getting rich selling old photographs. They usually sell for around $10, maybe 20 if the subject matter is really, really cool. But every time I showcase them in my what sold videos, someone says I had no idea you could sell old photos or who would want old photos. These people would want old photos. It is an extremely lucrative business. Guys, here's an entire box. The seller did not want to part out individually every one of these. There are over 4,000 photos here, but they got over $200. So you don't even have to go through and do each individual one. But I just, I, I feel like this is a category much like um, sports cards, much like postcards that if you're a reseller uh, that for health reasons has limited mobility, if you have are limited on your storage space, if you're limited on what you can lift and carry and ship, get in on these categories. Vintage photos for the win. Another lot here that sold for over $125, that was 460 Polaroids. And look at all these random lots of photos and how much they sold for. I do list photos individually or one time I came across a family's photos, uh, 1956 from the Memphis Zoo, and I listed them as a collection because I felt like those animals were there together in the 50s. They deserve to stay together uh, today. So I sold all of those together as a lot. Some keywords you want to use when listing photos would be snapshot, found photo, Polaroid if it is one, B&W for black and white, square if it's those great 1950s through 1970s square photos, and if the subject matter fits, use words like creepy, haunted, ghost. Check out this one that sold that used ghost as a keyword. $150 for two pictures. One thing I urge you to keep in mind and consider though when you are listing or sourcing photos is that even if it is a historical photo, you cannot go against eBay's guideline. Keep that in mind, especially when you are sourcing um, any photos surrounding World War II. Many of those symbols cannot be listed anywhere on eBay and Holocaust material is extremely sensitive on eBay. Be sure not to sell photos photos that depict violence or um, anything again that would go against eBay's community guidelines and standards. You don't want to get in trouble over a $12 photo. Okay, I'm going to catch some flack for this one and I've never actually listed this myself, but I see it all the time. I know that you're, you're going to have to list this in the appropriate category. Um, listen to me when I say this. I have not listed in this category. If I were going to, I would ensure my listing followed every single one of eBay's um, standards of practice and guidelines for this, but this is a category nonetheless that sells huge on eBay, um, not as a consumable product, but more um, as a prop or a collectible item, and that is expired food. Say what you want in the comments, it sells on eBay. Check out this Kraft macaroni and cheese from the late 60s, early 70s that sold for $10. Here is some Kellogg s'mores from 2003. Guys, just sold for $43. And sometimes it's entire collections of unopened food from years gone by. It does sell on eBay. One thing that you want to ensure is that you're always putting expiration dates on your products. You don't list that under food because that insinuates that you are um, implying that someone should consume it, which is not good, not healthy. Possibly consider advertising that you're selling the box, the package, the container, that it is unopened. In my opinion, the buyer's going to get the idea that the food is coming in there, but then you are just selling the container. Again, do your own research. I'm just relaying the information to you that it is a category a lot of people would not consider, but I see a lot of resellers online making really good money when they go to an estate sale and there's an expired package of Jell-O from the 1950s, that thing is gonna sell on eBay. One of the keywords that you wanna use when you list those expired unopened food products would be prop, and that really deserves a category all of its own. Movie prop, I have sold a lot lot of really cool vintage items that end up on movie sets. You can always tell by the address. Sometimes it is even noted in the address that it's going to the prop department. But the props aren't usually the super cool suit of armor that you think. It is everyday mundane 
products like panty liners, diapers. I sold a bag of crayons to a prop department filming a movie in New Orleans once. Look at this Tide that sold for almost $100. Their last keyword, movie prop. When you're watching a movie, you want to be fully immersed in the experience. Every little detail in the back needs to be historically accurate to whatever time period they're filming the movie in. And I am here to tell you that the prop department and set designers are flocking to eBay every time. Put movie prop as a keyword if you need to. Put the decade. I just recently made a keyword video and I talked about the keywords that you would use uh, for the time period that a product is from. In this case, you really want to do that upright because your item could end up on a movie set. I can't even believe an old item like this could go for $154. Now, it may be the case that someone just really likes the old product in the way that it was made. That could be the case with these trash bags from the 80s, although I'm not sure if there would be some dry rot there. I recently sold some faultless starch. I would sell them three boxes for $50 and I did that three times and I had a couple that I sold individually. I picked up an entire box of them at auction for $8 so I more than made my money back on those. An item like that that doesn't necessarily expire, again it could be that someone just likes the old formula, the old way that it was made. So when you see something like that and you think that could be a discontinued product, that's its own category. Discontinued products. If they stop making it, trust me, someone is still looking for it. I have been that someone before. Recently I was looking for a scented body wash, uh, Lady Gaga's Fame, and they don't make it anymore. So where do you think I went? To eBay and I had to pay $20 a bottle for it, but I was able to find some. I just loved that scent when they put it out in like 2012 and I hadn't been able to find it since. 11 years later, eBay for the win. I have never talked about selling this item and not had someone in the comments say, I can't believe that you can sell that. And that is old office and school supplies. Guys, I sell vintage crayons. I just told you about the bag that I sold to the prop department. I have sold vintage crayons multiple times. One thing people always ask is how can you tell that the crayons are vintage? If you are into selling vintage, I would encourage you to get familiar with the paper type. You've sold vintage long enough. You could look at the, the wrapping on the outside of the crayon and tell immediately that it's vintage, but also study fonts from certain time periods. Crayola crowns without the website, that's a good indicator that it's vintage. Crayola that is made in America, all of those things kind of add up. There's not just one smoking gun unless you find a discontinued crayon color, like the color flesh, which was deemed politically incorrect. If you find that, it sells for a lot of money. And there's an entire list of discontinued Crayola crayon colors. Major collectors want those colors. But even more than when I sell old crayons, people want to know how did you sell old pencils? Did you have any idea that people collect old pencils? They collect them. There are certain pencils that they just don't write like that anymore. If you find electrographic pencils, especially the IBM ones, pick them up. I have made seriously good money selling vintage pencils in my reselling career. Yes, vintage pencils. One time I was at a yard sale and a guy had this desk for sale and uh, he thought I was looking at the desk but really I was just checking all the drawers and there were old pencils in there and I said how much for just the pencils and he, he gave them to me for like 25 cents but there were some seriously cool old pencils in there. You can lot them up if they are something fantastic like these you can sell them individually. Guys this is a true listing and it is not a standalone. There are so many listings just like this. 42 of these pencils sold for $900. 900, 900 for 42 pencils because they're not making them like this anymore. Here's a lot of Lisa Frank pencils. If you were unaware, Lisa Frank collectors are seriously serious. If you find Lisa Frank pencils, stickers, binders, pencil pouches, pick it up. Be aware though that there are a lot of reproduction Lisa Frank as of late. Dollar Tree even put out some Lisa Frank material. So ensure that what you have is truly vintage but when it is, you can really take that to the bank. Other office supplies that I've sold includes a vintage chalk, believe it or not. You can usually tell. Now, you're not going to be able to tell from a loose piece of chalk. That's more if it's in the box. And I've sold pastels and I've also sold uh, dustless white chalk. I picked up some vintage staples once. I didn't really think that they were worth anything. I could just tell by the box that they were vintage. I ended up selling several hundred dollars worth of these vintage staples. It turns out that the people that bought them, uh, they were railroad collectors. They would make model trains in the basement 
basement and he said that that particular type of staple was the only one that was historically accurate for them to put down the staples in this model train display. I promise if it is vintage, if they are not making it anymore, if it was wood, metal, or glass, someone is looking for it, pick it up, you have it, they want it, make the sale. Along the lines of office supplies would also be any type of ephemera. Old magazines can be incredibly lucrative. I was at an auction house recently and they had stacks and stacks of Time Life magazine, like the really large Time Life magazine. And uh, I was not interested in these whatsoever. They auctioned off by the stack and people were paying $60, $70 per stack. Well, at the end, there was uh, almost a whole table of these magazines left. And he said, who will give $15? No one wanted to. He said, who will give 10? And I thought, no one's going to give $10 for this whole table of magazines. I will. Well, I loaded them up. It was two suitcases full of magazines. I had two different whatnot sales. One of them was over $800 in magazines. I started every single one at $3 a piece. The other whatnot sale was over $500. So just together, that is $1,300. But let me tell you what happened. Uh, many of them were look magazines. So the thing that I did before I had the whatnot sale, um, I went to eBay and I typed in look magazine. I filtered by sold and then I filtered highest to lowest because I wanted to know, were there any standout rock star pieces that I needed to be aware of? Because I had two suitcases full. I, I didn't have the time, the energy, or the desire to go through piece by piece. But there was one look magazine, a very important edition of look magazine that um, more than once had sold for $500. While I was doing the whatnot sale, I pulled out that magazine and I had already committed that to memory. I had already done my research. I set it to the side. I listed that thing on eBay for $500 and it sold within an hour for $500. So adding that with the $1,300 that I made, I was able to clear over $1,800 from a $10 table of magazines that no one else wanted at my local auction house. It may be the thing that you do not want to buy that ends up making you enough money to pay your bills. Everything is worth looking up and, and you may honestly find an entire category. I would never list anything in ephemera, but I had so much fun with those ephemera sales on whatnot. The last category that you have maybe never considered listing in on eBay is junk drawer lots. In the last 90 days, 6,600 junk drawer lots sold. Yesterday alone, 40 sold on eBay and it was a Monday. So what are junk drawers? eBay has a policy against mystery boxes when the items are completely undisclosed, but a junk drawer lot, you actually take a lot of little trinkets that you have, a lot of uh, seemingly valueless items, and maybe you lot them together with one or two things that are really gonna catch a buyer's eye. Essentially, you lay all of those out gallery style. You take your picture, you take several pictures of each individual item, and you're hoping that those few rockstar pieces drive up the bids, but you just have an auction for this junk drawer. It's nice when your junk drawer lot has a category. It could be vintage jewelry. It could be unmarked jewelry. It could be signed jewelry. It could be children's toys. I once did a junk drawer lot for a the bottom of the kid's toy box, basically. It was all kinds of vintage kids' toys, including little things like Cracker Jack toys, um, baseball cards, things of that nature. I hope that you learned something in today's video. I hope that I've opened your eyes for a new category that you want to go scavenging for. Whatever you do, do not let the knowledge you gained in today's video live inside your head. Start looking for these items, source them, get them listed, and sell them. I thank you so much for watching. God bless you guys, and remember, treat your business like your business.